All right, y'all, I'm so excited because I get to sit down with my new friend and author of the new book, Dirt, Mary Morantz. Mary, thanks for being here. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me, Christy. I'm excited. So this is an interesting title. Let's just let's just talk about it. Like it like really dirt. Is, yeah. I love the tagline, growing strong roots in what makes the broken beautiful. Mm. Uh, Tell me about this. Why did you want to write this book? And tell me what the book is about. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really great that you jumped right in on Dirt is an interesting title. And that subtitle is sort of like, my publisher was like, we really need to have like a much more redemptive subtitle with a title like Dirt. To explain it. They were a little concerned. (laughs) Totally, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are like, Dirt, actually, on the way down. it's interesting. I like it because it makes you go, tell me more about that, you know? Yeah, on the way down here, we actually called a store because I've yet to get to see it in person. And I said, oh, I'm calling to see if you have this book, Dirt. And she went, Dirt? (laughs) Yeah, Dirt. (laughs) I'm the author. Yeah, Yeah, you have it. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, You know, I think what's really interesting is when this book was getting ready to come out, when we revealed the cover, I think there were a lot of people in my story, in my family, in my hometown, who were maybe a little nervous. Mm Because with a book like Dirt, that could go a lot of ways. It could be like, I'm going to be a tell-all. Yeah, Yeah. or it could be like, I'm complaining about the dirt, Mm -hmm. or I'm going to like over-exaggerate the dirt. But for me, this tagline, it always started with dirt, really started to take hold. And for me, that really stands for when we think about, of all the things God could have chosen to create man out of, stars, air, water. Mm -hmm. He chose the dust of the ground, which is really just dirt. Mm. And he leaned down with his breath and breathed life into it. And that, I think of like the vapor of breath mixing with dirt and becoming kind of mud. And if God could create beautiful things in an entire, you know, all of man out of mud, out of the muddiest parts of our story, what can he do with each of our individual stories? Mm -hmm. And so I think we shy away from dirt. We get scared of these parts of our stories we think disqualify us, Mm -hmm. that we think will make people turn away from us rather than lean in. And we try to hide that away and put on the right outfit and get the hair curled just right Mm -hmm. to be the most put together woman in the room because we're terrified if people knew Mm -hmm. these muddier parts of our story that we would lose them, this book says that's actually one of your strongest superpowers. Mm -hmm. And when people know that vulnerability in your story, they lean into it Mm -hmm. because we all have muddy parts in our story. You have had some interesting experiences. Like you have, (laughs) like your life is crazy. So let's just take take me through some of the major milestones. Like, okay, like, you know, from the beginning and some of the things, because you unpack some of this in the book of just like the extremes that you've lived in, the things that you've done, kind of walk us through that, an overview. Yeah, so I think the first thing to know is that the trailer on the cover is the trailer I grew up in. Um, My husband, Justin, actually took that photo the first time I brought him home to West Virginia to meet my family. And somebody asked me recently, like, you know, Justin grew up in a suburb in New Jersey where they had a Tiffany's in their mall and a Louis Vuitton in their mall. And so now I'm bringing him where, like, you have to go two and a half hours to, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Subway or whatever. Right, right. Um, and so what I said was, you know, from the very first second, there was no judgment. Mm-hmm. Like, that was just a part of my story. And he was drawn to that scene because it was it made up me. Yeah. And there's a part in Dirt where I talk about, I asked him once if he ever wished I was just a, a girl who came to the table with a little bit of an easier story. You know, a suburb, a happy home. And he said, I love your scars like I love your dots, which are, what I want to tell you are freckles, but are really just moles. Yeah. <laughs> um, he said, when I connect them, it helps me understand who you are. Mm. And so I grew up in a trailer, a single wide trailer. You can see that we built on a like lean-to addition. Mm-hmm. That's um, sort of the thing to do with a single wide trailer. Yeah. And we put on the roof at some point. And uh, fast forward 24. Four years, and I got into Yale Law School. And that's such a—those th- two things, exactly that word you use, these are these extremes. They're like whiplash. They're such extremes. And what I think is really interesting about this story is that even if you cannot resonate with this extreme of a trailer or this extreme of the Ivy League, we all find ourselves in the story of dirt because we all know what it feels like to want to run so hard from failure that we stumble into success and to want to run so hard from these things that we think disqualify us that we just sort of end up becoming the most put-together woman in the room, like I talked about. And there's this part in Dirt where I talk about the girl in the red cape. Mm -hmm. And that was very important for me to include because I think a lot of people who hear a story like this, they can go, okay, so maybe the trailer wasn't great, but it forced you to become who you are, and you ended up with, like, Yale Law and, Mm -hmm. like, success and achievement. So, like, what's there to worry about? Mm -hmm. A lot of people can look at people like us, Christy, who I think have hard things in our story, and we become very, very successful, or we try to achieve really hard, and they think, whoa, like, you know, what a hard problem to have that you just became really Mm -hmm. achievement-oriented. 
But for me, I said, my running was not like, if I were making a joke here, I would say it's like Forrest Gump where they hand him the football. He doesn't know when to stop. Yeah, yeah. So he runs into the yeah, end zone, yeah. victory after victory. Yeah, yeah. That's how people see it, I think. But for me, I wanted people to know how primal and visceral and survival achieving can become. Mm-hmm. Where I'm the girl in the red cape clawing her way out of the deep, dark woods, branches clawing at your skin, the big bad wolf ripping at your heels. You feel like if you stop, it just might kill you. But when I turn back breathless and wide-eyed, I see it. I am the girl in the red cape, but I am also the wolf. Mm. And that voice in my head telling me to run and not stop running, that voice is my own. Mm. And so, yes, it does result in these highlight reels of success. But when you're in the thick of it, the unhealthy part of that achieving, it can feel like achieving is my oxygen, Mm -hmm. but it's no way to breathe. Mm. Yeah. I know that— People probably thought you were crazy. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> Many times. Probably. Like, like <laughs> so, along the way, the things that you have run from, run to, accomplished along the way, mm-hmm. certainly where you come from, yeah. it would be easy for people to think, like, well, who does she think she is? And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and just think you're crazy. Yeah. How do you? How you deal with that? How you deal with people that are, you know, and, yeah. and some of them may be privately behind your back, and some of them maybe to your face, like, what are you doing? Yeah. How do you handle keeping yourself, even the healthy achievement, even the, my past is not going to define me. Mm. I'm going to write my story. Like there's a healthy aspect of that completely. Yeah. And and you're still, regardless of where or why, you know, where it's coming from, you're going to face opposition and people that are going like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. How how have you dealt with that? Oh gosh. Uh, Not well at times, (laughs) if we're being honest. But, but I think it's, I think it's this. I think, um, I had a few close friends. Um, They've become close friends. We were in high school together, and they've only recently become close friends. And they were on the launch team, and they got to read the book early. One was one year ahead, and one was two years ahead. And when we revealed the cover, the one who was one year ahead sent me this photo in a DM. And she said, this is what you're doing this for. This is who you're speaking for. And it was just this shack of a house sitting on a hill. And I said, oh, thanks so much, girl. But like, Whose house is this? What house is this? And she said it was mine. Mm. And I never would have guessed that about her, and Mm. she never would have guessed it about me. She was, you know, head cheerleader and homecoming queen, and just you would never, ever think it. And I have gathered a collection of photos on my phone of people sending me their own trailers, whether it's an actual trailer or a shack of a house or just the metaphorical trailer in their life. And so I think that I've learned a lot about perception through writing this. And if somebody doesn't feel like either that's the truth about my story or they're they're like, who is she to do that? It's coming from a place of they saw me as one way and I knew the whole story. And that means I might be seeing them as reacting one way, but I probably don't know the whole story. Mm -hmm. So I've just always tried to come from that place of what I saw in both of them, the, the year ahead and two years ahead girls, was that right after they read the book, there was this moment of like, whew, like, We grew up the same way, and, like, this is pushing me to go say, like, what can I do now? Mm -hmm. And, like, what do I want to do with the rest of my story? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you just have to—with a story like this, you just have to let people sit with it for a little while Mm -hmm. um, and realize that the more that I can be honest about, it wasn't easy and it continues to not always be easy, the less this becomes, like, an indictment of go do stuff with your life and the more it becomes a permission slip. That's the hope anyway. Mm, That's so good. I've got a really practical question, but I feel like as I'm thinking about some of the things that you've done and accomplished, Mm -hmm. coming from where you come from, and and you see, you know, people tend to take one of two paths when they come from a lot of adversity or a lack of resources or even just a mindset of like, you're never going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. We don't do that here. Who do you think you are? Like, if if that's the belief system in your family, your culture, your community, whatever, your small town. Yeah. Then it's it's that much harder mm. to swim upstream to, yeah. to go against the current because that when you're growing up your developmental years that is what is normal to you that is that that's yeah. framing your view of the world and yeah. and who you are and what you do and what is okay and what is not okay. How have you had this? And maybe you haven't. Maybe it developed over time. But this inner conviction and drive and belief mm. that these things are even possible because yeah. it's like if you don't believe something's possible, you're not going to try. That's right. And you didn't really have a lot of reason to believe yeah. that it was possible. And so how have you come out of this with not just the drive and, and achievement, but even just the internal belief mm. that you 
you had even permission to try for it or yeah. go for it or, yeah. you know. You know, they say that if a child has one adult in their life who takes an interest in them and tells them that they can do things with their life, that it can change the whole trajectory. Wow. And I had a few of them in my life. Uh, my grandma Goldie, I talk about her in the book a lot. She is a character. One part sassafras, one part firecracker. Mm. Um, and she just thought I hung the moon. And I talk about, like, she saw me the way that God sees me through grace, and it feels like, who are you talking about? You know, yeah, like, yeah. who are you describing that way? So she saw me as, like, I could always be better than where we were. But my dad was the one who was, like, you know, if she saw it, he was the one who put, like, he got his hands dirty doing it. Um, and so when I was getting ready for kindergarten, he actually started bringing workbooks home so that I would be prepared because he did not feel prepared going to school and he barely graduated high school. And we started in the kindergarten workbooks and then we kept going so that when I started my kindergarten class, I was at a sixth grade reading and fifth grade math oh level. My gosh. And when you start off that way, yeah, it becomes this like domino effect, right? And yeah. I say in the book, words have the power to speak life or death. And when people call you smart, you act smart. You mm -hmm. rise up. You want to prove them right. Yeah, you come up to what they expect or you you rise and fall to expectations. And I said, when J.R. Best was concerned, there was never any doubt. Much was expected of me. So what's weird is that he expected a lot of me while at the same time, he always said over himself, kid, this is just the way it is. This is the way it was. This wow. is the way it always will be. He always called me kid. You'll see that in the book. Um, and so I think that's really interesting for parents is what I would say is one, if you feel like you don't have a lot of resources right now, if you feel like you're struggling with money, never underestimate the power of one adult taking an interest in a child's life and what a few workbooks can do. But two, remember to speak those words over yourself because a lot of it is caught rather than taught. Yeah. And so we're listening as your kids when you talk about what's possible and what you say is possible for you we internalize for what's possible for us. There's so many amazing takeaways, but I just love that you're willing to share your story because I'm sure it was super vulnerable. Maybe therapeutic, yeah. but also vulnerable. Yeah. Um, but just like that girl that DM'd you gives mm -hmm. hope to people that you're giving a voice to. So tell yeah. people, before we wrap up, tell people where they can get a copy yeah. and connect with you on social media and find out what you're up to. Yeah, so the central hub is thebookdirt.com. Yes, dirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Thebookdirt.com. You can watch the book trailer. You can find out all the uh, little blurbs and endorsements and things like that and uh, grab a copy if you want. And yep. then it's at Mary Morantz on everywhere, basically. Yeah. Perfect. Mary, yeah. thanks so much. Thanks for thanks your story so and thanks for, for being me. here. Yeah, thanks for having me.